Yeah. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Broski, can you hear me? Yeah. All right. Can I hear you now? Yeah. There you go. Right, cool. All right. I'm going live right now. This is episode 40. We're live? Uh, just a minute. It's so strange. I look so blurry with this uh, crappy computer. We're online. online. Cool. Where are you? I'm in Boston at oh, the right. Revere Hotel. In Austin, Austin, Massachusetts? <laughs> yeah. Aspen. Aspen, Massachusetts. Uh, All right. <laughs> we are live. We are cool. Yo, yo, it's everybody. I'm trying to figure out how to do both of these. All right, I'm just going to get the post together. Okay. We, we can ask if we have any questions. If not, then um, I want to talk about a topic that we don't ever talk about, but is such a big part of our lives. You have me on pins and needles. Okay. You give me. Hold on. I got some here and then I'm going to be. Okay, so thank you for everybody who's coming online right now. Come say hello, let us know you're out there. Say hello, click like. What's up, Costa? Hey, Lily, what's going on? One of these days we're gonna connect, me and you. That or we're just gonna run into each other on the street. <laughs> All right, guys, cool. So if you're uh, just coming online right now, um, this is our Wednesday Q&A. Uh, I do have a topic in mind I wanted to discuss anyway, and I haven't really run it by Elon either. Um, but something that's uh, near and dear to our hearts, but honestly, we rarely, I say and, we rarely ever actually talk about it, especially not in these forums. So I thought it would be a fun thing to talk about. Uh, does everybody have any questions that they want to ask us first? And I have a weird feeling that even if you ask us that question, somehow it'll work into it, as it does. As it always does, yeah. Hey, Jody, what's cooking? What's up, Jody? <clears throat> All right, guys, so let me direct it a little bit while you guys are contemplating. If you have any questions, please just throw them in the comment box. So I wanted to talk about uh, health today. <laughs> I was sitting around last night and I thought to myself, I'm like, you know, we talk about so much um, spiritual development stuff, personal development stuff. I'm like, and we definitely believe the uh, body is such a big part of that. And the uh, integration that can happen between mind, body and heart is such a pivotal role. And yet we hardly ever talk about health stuff. 
and we've gone through just massive, <laughs> massive transformations in the last year and a half. And outside of like mentioning it here and there, we've never got in depth as to what we do, how we do it. Um, I sat around last night building out a page that still needs some work, but like an entire PDF of like supplements and drinks that we do and all this different kind of stuff. And I thought it'd be fun to give it as a resource and, you know, just honestly open it up as a topic that we talk about um, because like it's an area of huge interest to me. Um, I was actually sitting around with Michael Bledsoe, who's a good friend. He's the uh, owner of uh, Barbell Shrugs and now he's doing his own stuff too. Um, and he's got a vast, vast array of knowledge. And when I'm around him, I'm just like, you know, like <laughs> give, give, give. Um, but you know, I'm super interested in that stuff. I've definitely gotten, it's interesting. Cause like, if you would ask me about supplementation a year and a half ago, my experience of it was so different, you know, like give me the pill, the vitamin, blah, blah, blah. I didn't really take time to understand the individual things, how they work yeah. individually, how they work together. And now I'm like, that stuff is really interesting to me. Um, I love learning about biology and I love learning, learning how different things are working together. And I know that it's, you know, part of the reason that we have, I mean, I've slimmed down 24 pounds in the last year and a half or so. I feel like I'm in the best shape of my life. I think you would, uh, agree with that. You are also, and I just know that there's little things that we picked up on that before I didn't know because I didn't even have the context or awareness to want to know. And suddenly yep. I do. And there's these major shifts in not uh, just in my body, but, um, how I feel physically, how I feel mentally, um, what it's giving me access to as far as like my superpowers and stuff like that. So um, I'll just open the floor up to you and to anybody who wants to ask questions about anything pertaining to health or uh, anything related to that, you know, like what do you feel has, what do you feel is like the biggest shift for you? And it could be really any of those levels, um, you know, on any, on any of those fronts that I just mentioned. Uh, I, well, the, the first shift that happened, honestly, was just a level of awareness more than anything else. Um, and the, the, that all occurred when I started drinking Bulletproof coffee. Um, so up until that time, it wasn't like, I, it's interesting. I don't think that any of, neither of us were ever not healthy. You know, we'd been working out for years. We've been eating what I thought was relatively healthy for years. Um, when I started drinking Bulletproof coffee, what occurred was uh, Bulletproof coffee is just like a, we can get into what it is. For me though, the what it did was it started my day every single day at like this peak state where my body was burning fat and like I felt really good and positive and up. And then I would start noticing I would eat certain things at lunch and then I would just crash. Um, versus I would eat other things at lunch and I would just kind of keep that momentum going straight through to dinner. And that was when I first really started breaking down food like bit by bit by bit and just going, you know, when I put this into my body, I feel really good. When I put this into my body, I don't feel really good. And it was really just at that basic, basic level. I was just kind of like starting to tune in a lot more. And then that obviously leads to you know, this, this massive, massive rabbit hole, which is, okay, well, I'm becoming more conscious. I'm becoming more aware. Why does this kind of food not make me feel good? And why does this kind of food not make me feel good? And at that point, you know, uh, I started working with Dr. Beck, which was also massively enlightening um, towards, towards that. So um, that was really, I'd say the first step was just a level of awareness. And then once the awareness was there, I became much more interested and desired much more to feel a certain way. Um, and for me, just so you guys know, it's not about, you know, jumping out of my skin with, with, you know, energy and all that stuff. But like for me, my definition of feel good is to be alert and to have clarity. Um, and when I don't have clarity and I don't have alertness, I know that I put something in my body that's taking away from that. And that's kind of, that, that's how I gauge it. I'm not, I don't gauge it from a standpoint of like how much muscle, you know, can I put on my body or anything like that, which, you know, some people that that's how they gauge their health. Um, so th I just wanted to make that distinction because so I think you're, you're kind of similar. Tell me a little bit about your morning routine right now. Like what does it look like after you wake up with that first hour? Well, I, I wake up, I meditate. Um, and I've been messing with that, the new toy that you got me. How's that work? How's that going for you? 
Great so far. I mean, I've done it three days and three days have been just knockout uh, meditation. So tell, tell people what it is. It's a transmitter. Uh, here, I can show it to you guys. I can actually, I should be posted in the, uh, the chat box here too, so you guys can take a look at it yourself. Yeah. So uh, I don't know if you guys can see that. The camera's not all that great. It's called Elf Emit. Um, it's this little, it's not made of the best quality. I will no, tell you that. It's not. Um, it's I, I, little, I imagine they're making quite a bit of money on it considering how much of the cost of probably producing that is. Yeah. So it's this little band that you basically just drape kind of like backwards glasses on the back of your head. And what it does is it actually emits a, a signal like an electric signal um, that basically synchronizes your mind. So it, it, you know, it has modes for meditation, for focus, for accelerated learning, for sleep, things like that. You, you hook it up to your phone in an app. And yeah, I've been doing it now for three days, all three days. I've blown past my um, meditation timer just in an unconscious, you know, deep state. I uh, have definitely lost myself a few times in that world. So yeah, it's been fun. So I do that, I meditate. Um, then generally, depending on uh, when I wake up and, and when my kids wake up, <laughs> um, I will spend the next uh, 30 minutes or so reading. And then once my children are up, um, at that point, you know, my, my day kind of gets going. I start, I go downstairs, and the first thing I do is I actually drink uh, borax, mixed with water and then after so there's a borax uh, in water then I drink um, apple cider vinegar tablespoon of that in water I drink that down and I wait about 10 minutes and then after about 10 minutes I make myself a uh, yerba mate bulletproof yerba mate is just a type of green tea it, um, it has natural form of caffeine um, which your body actually really, really likes, or my body, I should say, really, really likes. And uh, I mix that with grass-fed butter, uh, MCT oil. I put collagen in there now, and I also put uh, cinnamon in there now. And that's what I drink. Um, and that basically, that'll happen at around 7.30, and I won't eat. I actually moved my lunch to much, much earlier, so my lunch now is at around 11, 11.30. So that's kind of like the beginning of my day. Cool. Yeah. Um, just to kind of like go through mine because mine's similar, but with a few shifts, I definitely wake up in the morning. I, I do my meditation. Uh, sometimes I actually take nootropics right before my meditation. Um, just so I can like feel a kick again in the middle and just kind of like opens my mind. So once I'm done with that meditation, I'm like nice, nice no air. Uh, but I've actually haven't done that this month. Uh, I just kind of experiment with, with when I believe is like the best time for me to take that. Um, and we can talk about nootropics too, because people ask me constantly yeah, all about, the time. about it. And I actually did not add that to the PDF yet, but I can. Um, <clears throat> so my day is I actually warm up the water a little bit. It's like lukewarm. I put apple cider vinegar in it. Um, I put salt in it, cayenne pepper. Uh, first thing in the morning, because your body needs uh, salt for absorption of water. I, I also go really extreme with my water, or what I think most people would consider extreme. Uh, I have a five phase uh, reverse osmos osmosis machine connected to my sink uh, yep. and it reintroduces minerals after it filters out the water and, yep. I, and, I, and I test it. So I, I, I know how clean it is in comparison to drinking just uh, tap or regular mineral water or anything like that. Um, and then I have this thing called a water revitalizer that you actually pour the water into and it looks like a uh, blender and it creates like a cyclone inside this machine, which oxygenates the water, but there's also a very powerful magnet inside the water, and there's also a mineral basket sitting in there. So essentially the idea is that the water moves, and the best water to drink is like a water that's moving through a stream because it's being exposed to UVA, UVB, it's getting the magnetic field through the earth, it's water in motion, and it's obviously picking up the minerals from uh, the riverbed. Um, technically, if you're not drinking some form of mineral water, you're actually not getting any nutrients from your water. So if you're drinking like, uh, you know, Pepsi or cola water, whatever they're called, those are just reverse osmosis. And literally you are actually not hydrating your body when you drink that stuff because there's just no 
no nutrition, no minerals being taken in, which is a very low absorption rate for water. Um, and the idea behind the revitalizer is that it actually reforms the cells because even mineral water standing still, uh, the cell structure of the water molecules change away from a hexagonal molecule and into other structures. And uh, your body can almost fully absorb a hexagonal structured water cell molecule. And that's super critical for the energy input output of the body and also for your cell's ability to detoxify. Every cell in their body wants to go through a detox process, but when it's not getting mineral water, it, it's very challenging with doing that. So um, those two systems probably cost about $600 together. And I've found night and day since I started drinking that stuff. Like actually when I travel, I kind of get a little sad that I don't have access to my, my bidet or my water filters. Um, <laughs> those are like two major things. I'm always like, fuck, how do I get these with me? Um, and then, um, yeah, so I drink that in the, in the morning and what I've just added to my first water drink is a uh, beetroot powder. Uh, cause I find like pretty much anything with, um, um, apple cider vinegar is going to be easy to drink cause it covers up the flavor of everything else. Um, so, and I also drink Borax too. And the beetroot powder is for a really specific reason. Um, a few, there's tons of health benefits to beetroots, uh, but it's a uh, lowers your blood pressure, and it's also a diovasculator. So it means it's uh, increasing the size of your capillaries and veins and stuff like that. And the reason I do that is because then I go make a bulletproof coffee like Elon does, and I put collagen in there. And I have found to be collagen, which is basically you're eating um, uh, organs and, and bones essentially. I have like a beef kosher uh, collagen is one of the healthiest things you can do. Um, especially in Western cultures, we eat the muscle of the animal, but we don't eat the organs or marrow. And muscle alone causes uh, inflammation in the body where marrow and organs and all that stuff uh, will be uh, anti-inflammatory in nature. So when you're not eating the whole animal, you're not getting balance of the animal and it's actually not good for you. So to just dump protein into the body can actually be quite bad for you like that way. And I didn't know that for, for a really long time. And the moment I put collagen in, I, I had massive shifts in, in terms of like pain response in the body, um, connective tissue, stuff like that. So the reason I want the beetroot powder with the collagen is it actually makes the collagen more bioavailable. And same thing with my health coffee. I do the cinnamon, I do cardamom, collagen, um, a little bit of grass-fed butter, although I'm probably going to get off of that too, just to get, I don't want other animal dairy in me anymore, kind of, or at least I want to lower it as much as possible. Um, and that's been great. Like that's life altering for me. And, and for those of you guys that don't know, I, we both intermittent fast. You still intermittent fast, right? For the most Say part, again? You intermittent fast? Um, I mean, I guess it's not, not deliberate. I don't eat breakfast. So the yerba mate is my quote unquote breakfast. Um, you know, I think intermittent fasting is anytime you don't eat for a span of at least uh, 10 hours or something like that, um, which I think most people do anyway. But um, I, my last, I'll have a snack at maybe like 8 p.m. and then I won't eat till probably like 11, 11.30. Yeah. So it's kind of the same thing for me. But basically what that means is that um, we fast for, for roughly 16 hours a day. We eat in about an eight hour window. I have found that I don't eat anywhere near 2,000 calories to be good. Like I would say my diet right now is 80 to 90% vegetables, like whole foods and maybe 10 to 20% protein. Uh, I find myself wanting to lower protein more and more recently. And I'm just, just listening to my body more than anything. Um, and how I feel with my energy output. Uh, so it's been a big shift for me in the last year and a half to two years, as far as like diet and stuff like that. Um, you know, all of it is really with, with, in mind of detoxification and anti-inflammatory like antioxidants and all that kind of stuff and, and really just putting as much of as, as that as i feel in my body um i eat dessert i drink wine mostly these days i haven't had beer in a while um and i never make myself wrong for anything i put in my body which i think is so important like i never eat a sweets and have a bad thought while it's happening i'm super excited about it and if the next day comes around, I'll just be more mindful the next day of, you know, if I put something bad in, I'll just make sure that I'm putting a lot of good stuff in the next day and giving my body to an opportunity to detoxify itself versus just putting more shit into it. Um, so I think that stuff has made a big difference for me. Um, so a few things I'm going to try right now is uh, cricket. I'm going to get cricket powder. And the reason for that is it's so there is a, um, 
uh, a thinking that if like you have any kind of like tendon pain, so like right now I have I kind of did a little bit of cupping on my shoulder, you can probably see the mark a bit. Um, like if you have tendon pain over here, like this is the part of the animal you want to go eat because then you're getting the nutrients that are required to rebuild that part of the body. So it's like, it's eat what ails you essentially. So if you have like knee problems, yeah. So it's like, if you have knee problems, like go eat the knee of an animal. If you have liver issues, like go eat the liver of the animal. And that's like a, a really good tip. So, you know, it's actually quite important if we're going to eat animals that we're eating the whole animal. And again, like Westerners just don't do that. So a hack is to actually eat crickets because then you're eating a whole animal. It's you're eating organs, you're eating joints, you're eating everything. And, and crickets is, I think, one of the most potent proteins that you can get. Uh, so it's something I'm, I'm trying right now. But from you know people I've heard, that's uh, uh, a really, really like huge upgrade. Um, hmm. and, then, and what, you, you would just mix that in shakes? Yeah, you can even get like chocolate flavored cricket powder. I mean, you know, when things are powdered, it can be anything you're putting in your body that makes no difference yeah. to me. Um, and I'm looking at that in general because my understanding now is this is the first time in human history that, at least again, Western Westerners don't eat insects anymore. Where like our diet used to be filled with um, like scavenging for insects, fruits, plants, stuff like that. I mean, we're probably way more available to our ancestors than going and kill like a big animal, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so like, you know, uh, uh, us eating so much protein doesn't make sense. I think evolutionary, it doesn't evolutionarily, I mean, it does make sense to be eating some animal protein because uh, we have, we do have fangs, right? If you're just a, an animal eater, then your teeth tend to be totally flat like a cow is because you're just yeah. constantly chewing it. But the fact that we have fangs lets, lets us know evolutionarily that we were omnivores or have evolved to become omnivores. So I think that does make sense. Um, so I think that's a really big deal. And then I think having like a probiotic, like a really good probiotic is super important for gut flora, uh, digestion. Um, so I keep looking at different ones like that and that seems like a worthwhile investment. Uh, and then the last thing is, is um, I see it becoming more commonplace right now is like uh, coffees made out of mushrooms. I see some people are even trying to sell right now coffees that would replace mushrooms. So like changa. So uh, to get some kind of um, mixed mushroom powder of like high quality mushrooms. And uh, you can, again, you can put that into your shakes or whatever. And that's all for like immune, uh, immunity boosting, like massively immunity boosting uh, mushrooms you guys don't know this our, our brain and when they um if we could take like a high level view of mushrooms uh mushrooms are one large or, or one large organism on the planet in fact um there's some weird theories that we've actually evolved from these plants um and it's who knows at the end of the day but mushrooms are consciousness and when we actually zoom out and look at the entire organism it's just one large organism and the shape of it looks just like our brain Hmm. which is super interesting. So they're uh, plants that just carry a fuck ton of wisdom. Um, and they are, um, what word I'm looking for? Adaptogenics. They basically like adapt to adaptogenic. Like they, okay. essentially, they essentially adapt to your body. Like they oh, yeah. understand it and like adapt to it. Um, so these are like the things that I have found that are just crazy upgrades. Um, like, I can't remember the last time that I'm just like exhausted throughout the day or don't have energy or any of that stuff because of, of all these little tweaks. And I, and I love finding these kind of hats. Yeah. What do you, I mean, you've started, I mean, we started taking supplements many, many years ago as far as like vitamins because our mom was really into it and stuff. Um, the one thing I'll tell you all guys is every person's body is very, very different and very unique. So you have to just experiment with this stuff. You know, a lot of stuff that, you know, in the nootropic world, for example, there's a lot of stuff that people are like super gaga over and it doesn't do much for me. Um, so I think you just have to go off of your own body and just kind of understand and, and, and experiment, you know, like try this stuff for a week. If you feel a difference, obviously, you know, continue to do it. If not, just let it be. Um, I, yeah, I've tried so many different things. Um, well, how, the, how, do you, how do you judge, how do you judge whether something is working well for you or not? Cause you know, at the end of the day, it's like something can feel really good, but you're actually way, way overshooting the system. I, I mm -hmm. think like moderation is always key even with stuff that feels quite good. 
Um, yeah. how, how, so how do you really gauge your health right now? Because unless you're doing like blood panels, you know. So that, that's you took the words out of my mouth. Truly the only way to know if this stuff is, is working well for your system or not is to work with a functional medicine doctor and do these like, they're, they're expensive. They're, you know, fifteen, sixteen hundred dollar blood panels uh, that basically look under the hood and tell you exactly what's working and not working and this and that. I'll tell you the biggest lesson I've gotten from doing that um, is a lot of people get locked into like, I'm a vegan, I'm paleo, I do this, I do that. The one thing I've learned, um, and I've done this panel now twice so far, is vary your food as much as humanly possible. It's so much less about, um, a lot of people like, you know, people that are really into fitness, they tend to just eat chicken breast and, and vegetables, for example, right? And that's terrible for your body. Terrible. Um, you know, so, especially the chicken part. Well, I mean, all, all meat in one way, shape or form is, isn't great. But again, like it isn't great if that's the thing that you just continuously eat, you know, but if you mix like chicken and beef and you go pork and you go, um, all sorts of different fish and then shellfish and oysters and scallops and, uh, different rice. Like, you know, a lot of people are like, well, I like rice. Well, eat, there's 19 different variations of rice. So one time eat a rice from India and one time eat a rice from, China, you know, like vary your food, vary your fruits, vary your vegetables. As much as you can get variation in your body, what you're doing is you're basically, there's a biome system, uh, which what guy was talking about with probiotics, like there are certain biomes that we receive from certain foods. And so if you're only eating certain foods, then those biomes get increased in your stomach and then the other ones die, and that's an imbalance of biome, which means that you have all sorts of issues about digesting food, um, all, all sorts of stuff in your body, right? So as long as you can vary, like one of the things that I noticed for me in doing these tests is like I wasn't eating enough greens at the time, and also I wasn't eating any fruit. And for me, like fruit was never a thing. And when I actually stopped – I didn't stop, but when I uh, slowed down my intake of like, I would eat a meal and then eat something sweet, like a spoonful of Nutella or like, like some, some sort of sweet thing after every meal. When I stopped doing that after every meal, what I na my body still wanted the sugar, right? But so it starts craving natural sugar, which is from fruit. Um, so, you know, to, to answer your question, I don't think there really is a way to quantify how something is affecting you unless you do one of these panels accurately. Um, you know, I, I just, for me, again, it always goes back to clarity and energy. If I have clarity and I have energy, I mostly know that what I'm putting in my body, my body is liking because it's converting into energy and I'm clear. Uh, anytime I put something in my body, like, you know, I, I got so clear about what fried foods do to me, I just never paid attention, right? Like we used to eat, remember back in Metro days, we used to get lunches and we used to eat certain things and then you'd go sit at your desk and you'd, like 20 minutes after lunch, you're like, you can't think, you can't move, you can't anything. And you're like, oh, I just ate a big lunch. No, you just ate a whole bunch of fucking fried food. And so now, I mean, even if I would eat chicken wings, which I love and I still do. And every time I eat chicken wings, like I just literally feel my energy just go. And guess what? Two hours later, after your body's kind of like done what it needs to do with it, that energy comes back. Um, so, you know, if I'm like midweek, I'll never eat that shit. And like, I keep lunches super, super clean and super light. Cause I know that the rest of the day, I still need to be on my, on game and, and producing and all that kind of stuff. Like on the weekends while I eat wings every once in a while, fuck yeah. Like I, I really like wings, you know? Um, I just think you can, once you become aware of what's happening in your body, you can make much, much smarter decisions about where you're putting in there. 
Yeah, uh, I, I agree completely. And again, I, I think it honestly all starts with a positive frame of mind around everything. Even, even the stuff that I know that I is less desirable to eat, let's call it, not necessarily unhealthy. Um, I refuse to put programming in my body that's going to, like, let's say I'm eating a piece of chocolate or something or, you know, some dessert. If I'm like, oh my God, this is going to make me fat, like the, the body is sending messages, coenzymes, all sorts of other things on there that do lead to weight gain. You know, like I'm not saying I go like crazy over the weekends and then I expect to, you know, not have gained a pound or two, like on Monday, but most weekends that that never happens. Even if I don't eat completely clean or whatever, like I, I think again, life is about moderation and enjoying everything. Um, I know people who are just super crazy strict about stuff. I, I think there's key things that you really want to be mindful of, which is like, you know, other animal products, um, dairy, milk, stuff like that. It, and, and not for any other reason, except for the, it causes inflammation in the body. And then your body has to deal with that instead of putting nutrients into those places. Um, you know, it's, it's not overstressing and overworking the body by doing stuff like that. I love cheese. You know, I love hard meats and all that kind of stuff. But if you actually go do the research on it, you're going to find out that there's a lot of stuff in there that your body's going to have to deal with that it doesn't actually know how to deal with because it's never been <laughs> evolved to deal with it. Um, and that's where a lot of people run into, I think, uh, all sorts of health issues. Uh, and I couldn't agree more. Like, everybody's different. I don't believe in any, any specific diet plan. I think what you said is probably the most truthful thing is, like, variety. Variety in nuts and variety in plants and variety in animals just, you know, do do all that because the moment you start putting a lot of one thing in there the body's like fuck you know like so much of the same bad stuff just just can't be good it builds up so um yeah i mean and, and just kind of like put a loop on some of the stuff throughout the day that i do um i mean like nootropics uh, for those of you guys who haven't used them uh, i agree like a lot of people over here are into a very specific stack of nootropics out here but if you've never used it before like how do you know what's impacting you well if you're taking an entire stack you yeah. want to just kind of like do one at a time, see how different nootropics uh, work for you. There's a website called Nootropics Depot. It's uh, Nootropics N-O-O. -O. A lot of people spell N-E-U. Um, search Nootropics Depot and it'll come up for you. Uh, they have a Racetam family sample pack over there. I think that's a great, great thing to start with um, just because you can test a few different Racetams and those tend to do quite well for people. Um, Elon always uh, takes it with choline. So do I. And choline's like a, you probably describe it better, better than me, but let's say it's like a precursor to taking, um, to taking nootropics. It's, 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 simply put, it's a uh, lubricant for the cell walls in your brain specifically. In other words, I just dropped a link in there for nootropics, Diva. Um, you know, if, if you have cells in the blood barrier, right, and stuff can't go into the cells because the cell walls are hard, then you're not going to feel the effect. Choline actually allows the cell walls to become more gelatinous so that stuff can flow in and out of them. Yeah, again, make, making things more bioavailable. Um, like there's, uh, if you eat avocado, for instance, and you eat it with tomatoes, tomatoes actually make avocado more bioavailable. If you're putting turmeric in your drinks and you put a little black pepper in what you're drinking, then the pepper actually makes turmeric more bioavailable. So it's kind of in that same vein. Um, just makes it more, more effective. Um, and I actually drink um, apple cider vinegar throughout the day. Do you? Sometimes in the middle of the day, um, definitely before I go to bed. Something I learned from uh, Tim Ferriss that's actually quite delicious is make tea. Uh, put apple cider vinegar in there with a little bit of honey. It's delicious. And hmm. I guess for a lot of people, that actually helps them go to sleep and knocks them out. Um, I haven't really noticed those results, but that's because I generally sleep fairly well as it is. And I think that's probably the... Um, easiest tip I would give you is sleep well. I think minimum seven hours a night. I mean, that, that's about what I need to function well. Uh, eight hours is ideal, but it's, it's actually rare that I personally get eight hours. Um, you know, like know your body. And I think that's probably the smartest thing is like, listen to your body. Yeah. A, a doctor can only surmise what's going on with you. Um, I, there's definitely functions for Western doctors, but when it comes to like what ails you, they're not looking for the cure. You know, they're looking to give you something to medicate it and cover it up. And that's going to cause all sorts of other issues in your body because those medications make you lose awareness and connection with your body. And then you're actually not listening to your body. I know if I go to like a homeopathic doctor, the ones I trust are the ones that walk in. I walk in there and they add the first question they'll ask me is like, so what do you feel is going on? Like, what is your body telling you that's happening? 
and then they start looking from from that location because it's like you have you know your body you've been there for a while and you have great instincts about what's not working and what is working um you know western medicine does not tend to look in that direction and i think that should be oftentimes the last resort from for medicating yourself so um and those are just opinions we're not medical doctors and please don't take any of this as uh medical advice if you have something that's really going on and you feel like you need to talk to your doctor you should um other than that um i think people would be surprised that we don't spend countless hours at the gym all the time <laughs> like i think people are always surprised when i tell them like they're like how much do you work out and my sessions are usually 30 to 40 minutes and i'm at the gym yeah, four or maybe five times a week um i found uh, quality over quantity for sure um, I don't believe in traditional weightlifting like at all anymore. I think that's while it builds muscle, it's, it's all the wrong muscle. It's muscle that has a single function and doesn't have any range of motion. And I think as you get older, that creates problems too, because you're just powerful doing one thing. Um, you know, I would, I would do research on functional exercises, exercises that, um, involve some kind of stretch motion or rotation motion. Uh, while you're lifting something, um, I don't know about you, but like with, with with small exceptions here and there, like the heaviest weight I pick up is about 15 pounds at the gym. I do a lot of body weight stuff. Yeah. So I, I found that to get me way better results, much more of the body that I want, um, keeps my flexibility at least to, to some degree. Um, and yeah, I'm playing with some really cool workout stuff right now that I should just introduce to Elon this week. Um, and honestly, like the older I get, the less my motivation becomes to uh, work out really hard. It's, it's actually much more focused on recovery. Like how do I recover quicker? Yeah. Um, because it's just, you know, then I could go work out every single day. And even if it's 15 or 30 minutes of um, like, what I'm looking for? Uh, something with the V but I don't remember basically like, um, hard, you know, hard movements for 15 to 30 minutes. That's going to really get me sweating my heart yeah. rate up. Um, that's really what I'm looking for. That's it. Like, you know, just following those like simple things and, um, everyone keeps asking me what the fuck I'm doing and that's what I'm doing. Brilliant. Are you going to share that document with them or are yeah. you going to take some more time to put it together? I put the PDF in there. Um, yeah, I can, I might make some changes to it down the line but it'll all it'll be at that um link anyway uh the only thing i would want to add in there is probably just nootropic information okay. um otherwise yeah all the things we talked about are, are more or less on there cool anything else you want to share no nope. um have an amazing week and and the, the one thing i'll just say is like experiment don't don't be afraid you know your body is super resilient um trying new things, throwing different things at it. Um, you'd be surprised what the body can, is capable of. Mm. I agree. Definitely experiment. All right, friends. Thank you for uh, joining us today. We will be back here next Monday. Love you guys. Love you guys. Bye.